St. Podcast episode 57. I just want to end that where drink. Ben brought a fish hook to work today. Ben's going fishing. Uh, we've talked about before, it can be a bit of a wild Ooh. card. That can also uh, include <laughs> just things like unpacking my bag and a fish hook falls out. So, done a lot of fishing lately? Uh, I, I have done quite a bit of fall fishing. Have you really? I have. Um, I've had a little more free time than I've been used to having. Why is that? Um, just some transition stuff. Okay. And um, so I've enjoyed it. So I've actually, um, uh, I keep, you know, boots and my rods in my car. And so a lot of times on the way home from work, I'll stop and just spend an hour, 90 minutes just fishing. And Wait, where's your Where's your hole? It depends on what I feel like fishing for. No, um, say more. But... Uh, there are some good ponds and things around Indy um, that are public. There's also uh, Fall Creek's great. Um, you know, you can you can catch smallmouth and trout out of there. Um, the White River's okay. The canal's actually a lot of fun to, to fish in. So, and I drive over the White River and the canal to and from work every day. So it's um, pretty easy just to stop there. Uh, there's some also really other good spots that I'm not going to share because I don't want Ooh, secrets. I don't secrets want you people everywhere. listening to be like secrets. I don't care. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. No, well, I'm not going to tell you all where I go fishing because you can find your own freaking fishing spots. Yeah, but your own holes. Yeah, fish in your own holes. Holes, mm-hmm. fisher stealers. Eddie, do you uh do you go fishing? Um, other than for another bottle of no. whatever that you're feeding us with. Oh boy, just drinks and keeps the time. <laughs> when you hear the tone, it will be exactly. Time to get a drink. Just a little drink. And a little drink. We'll do. I'd rather be out fishing. Yes. Thank you, Eddie. And today we are drinking. Cilantro. Today we are drinking. We have talked before. Um about we have a good friend who's a representative for Bartstown Bourbon Company and um Bartstown not a sponsor uh not a sponsor but could be they might be our first sponsor (laughs) um Mm -hmm. uh Patrick likes rum a lot and um this is bourbon that is finished in rum barrels uh plantation rum to be exact and so so they call it brum they, they, they call it brum. <laughs> yeah. So we're having a brum today. Uh, from time to time, you'll know if you're an a, a avid listener, we thank you for your patronage. And, um, all three of you. All three of you. <laughs> so, uh, but you'll know sometimes we just have a bourbon. We don't necessarily have a, a cocktail or a mixed drink. We just have a drink. Um, and today, we're just having bourbon. We're just having a drink. So. Bourbon. Bottoms up. Mm-hmm. They, uh, they were just uh, named, uh, Forbes had an article how Bardstown just won the Best Bourbon Award or something. As... Yeah, their, um, their Origin Series, I believe, Yes. Um, got International Whiskey of the Year. Big. That's a big, big deal. And it's, it's a big deal because it's theirs, only theirs. Yeah. It's not a collaboration yeah. with anything else. It's just Which is theirs. new. That stuff just came out last year. It did. They, they it wanted did. to wait for, was it six years? I believe so. Six years in the, so. in the cast. So. We'll correct that in the show notes if we're wrong. Yeah. No, we're right. We nailed it. We we're had, always right. So when my buddy brought that out one night, he didn't tell me what we were drinking. He just poured it. Of the origin? The, of, the, of the white label origin. Uh-huh. There's a white label and a black label. Uh-huh. And he brought out the white label and um, I drank it and I was like, oh, that is good. What are we drinking? And he's like, oh, it's the new Bardstown Origin. And I was like, good night. And like, to me, I loved that because it was a, I wasn't blowing sunshine at him at all. Mm-hmm. It was just, ooh, that's fine. Like, that's a, that's a nice drink right there. Yeah. Um, and I like that. I, I like that it was authentic, that it was authentic. Yeah. I have, do you have a problem with that? With being authentic? No, with feeling like people are being authentic with you. Um, I, most, I just assume most people aren't, so. Okay, me too. I remember, I, so I have a, uh, <laughs> I, I have a, I have a, a neighbor and friend who 
she's just very, she'll tell you like it is. And I like that about her. She's a younger woman. And um, I, when I was first starting to really get into barbecue, I was like, I want you to come try this. Just you. Uh -huh, right. And she's like, okay. And I was like, um, because, oh, that's funny. The guy, the, our, our friend in the bourbon industry is calling me. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. yeah. No, he, he tried to call. I hope it didn't interfere with anything. <laughs> did it? Nope. Uh -huh. Okay. At least not that I can tell. Um, so I, I was. He knew like, what you were talking about. He, he knew. Must He's have. like, he must have. Keep your, my name out of your mouth. Yeah. Will Smith, you. So, which is funny because when I saw him yesterday, he was like, do you want to hang tomorrow? And I was like, well, I'm recording with Patrick, so I'll just text you when I'm done. Mm -hmm. But he's already he couldn't wait. He couldn't wait. He's, He's like, aren't you dude? done? Come on. How much time do you got to spend with that guy? As, oh. as long as it takes. That's how long I'm going to spend with you today. Um, so I invited her over and just said, just come by the, come in the backyard. I want you to try this. That's it. Try it and tell me if it's good. And she was like, okay, yeah, it, it is actually. It's really good. And I was like, oh, okay. So, because I was just like, everybody's lying. Because uh -huh. nobody right. wants to hurt your feelings. They don't want to be like, oh, right. Man, everybody's going to play the social mess. races. That's a mess. Oh, that's good. No, you do a good job of barbecuing the meats. Mm -hmm. We're busy, though. The next time you have a barbecue mm -hmm. meats party. I started to realize that it was okay when, um, like, I, we would host, like, our 500 party or something. Uh -huh. And there, there are no leftovers. Yeah, it's None. gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, imposter syndrome, inauthenticity. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, everybody, everybody's, you know, everybody's got an angle. Yeah, everybody's got an angle. Everybody's doing a thing. Everybody's trying to play nice. That's cool. Like forty-one it. degrees. That's my angle. Forty-one. Yeah, degrees. forty-one. Yeah. Forty-one. I like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's and it's it's that. Uh, you know, when people are like, "Oh, don't you love whatever." I'm like, yeah, no, I, I don't. It's cool that you, like, mm -hmm. people take offense to that if you don't love what they love. And it's like, no, I it's okay that you do, but I, I'm not a fan of that. Dude, you have no idea <laughs> how many people are baffled, genuinely baffled, that I don't love the superhero movies. <laughs> that I just, like, they're like, how? How have you never seen Iron Man? Because I, ha I read. Because I fish, because yeah. I kayak, because yeah. I sit outside and have a cigar, because yeah. I listen to baseball. Uh -huh. Like, I sitting inside watching movies ain't my jam. Yeah. Even in the winter, not yeah. my jam. And it's just, it's so funny to me that people who, and I get it, like, it's it's great if you're if you're passionate about something, if you love something, but it's it's also just like, I'm, I'm not alone. There's got to be other people. They might be octogenarians, but there's other people who've not seen these movies. Well, there's also this reality of just because I love it, I don't, I don't expect everyone else to love it. Mm -hmm. Like... I love it. Mm -hmm. It's a thing that I enjoy. You don't have to enjoy it. Like, yeah, probably fine that you don't. Like, yeah, good for you. So, that, like, that's when I'm like, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm a little surprised. Like, you know, the Ted Lasso, Ted Lasso series or whatever. Like, I read through a thread the other day of like people that hated it, and I was like, how do you hate Ted Lasso? And they're like, wow, yeah. too too vulgar and too whatever. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, you're just a I mean, you're, yeah, you're the one who's like, you're the person that says, gosh, and darn it, and I'm so, mm, I feel yeah. like those people would love Ted Lasso. Yeah. I feel like Ned Flanders loved Ted Lasso. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is funny. I'll ask you this question. My wife and I, I was listening to a podcast in the kitchen the other night, and um, a hypothetical came on where they asked, if you could go back and rewatch anything, having not seen it. So a good example, like the, the twist at the end of Sixth Sense. Mm -hmm. You go back and watch Sixth Sense, and you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. You've never seen it before. And so I paused it, and she was like, hang on, hang on. And, I was like, and so I paused it, and we start talking. And this is not real common for us that like we, we don't banter on hypotheticals sure, as right. a couple. And she's like, well, what would you pick here? Mm. And I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know. And so we kind of debated, and we got to, to you know, get you a little further along to where we were, it was, well, it's got to be a series, it can't be a movie, right? Because so many series, like, take you on this long journey over multiple seasons, right? even if it's The Office. But interestingly enough, her pick was Ted Lasso. And she's like, I would love to go back and rewatch Ted Lasso like I never saw it. Huh. And I was like, oh, that's the pick. Yeah. That's a great pick. Right. And it wasn't my pick, but it was hers. What would yours be? Uh, I want to hear your pick. True Detective season one. Oh, you, no doubt. Yeah, you mentioned that a few no times. Um, it's it's still to this day, and I've rewatched it probably three or four times, and it's uh, it's 
eight years old, maybe 10 years old, somewhere around there. It is still the greatest TV I've ever seen. Just season one only. But it was, um, I like darker stuff. I like that. I like the chase. I like the investigation, the drama. Um, it hit on all fronts for me. I, um, so I'll, I have a caveat with mine. I'd, I'd want the series to be completely available. Mm -hmm. And for me to watch it again, all the way through, completely available. We can do it. You can binge it. That would be... It'll be bingeable. Ozark. Oh, that's great. That was, what, three seasons? Yeah, but it oh, was, was so good. spread out. Like, yeah, that was it good. It was so much that you were like, hold on, I can go back and think about what happened. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> so we watched that, and we loved it. I mean, I, I don't know that I heard of anybody who hated it. Well, people out I there remember when I heard, when it came out, and I, when it was coming out, I was like, they're doing a show centered on the Ozarks. And so, like, I started watching Where it. Jason Bateman's not a good person? Yeah, right. And so, yeah. like, I started watching yeah. it to be like, what? And so I was a few episodes in before I was like, uh, I think you got to watch this. I think and yeah. then I drew Cammy into it. But then, like, the, the gaps between the seasons were just so long. Yeah, like, they were. Like, especially second and third. It yeah. Was forever. It was tough. So, like, and I don't think we went back and watched those like we did last time. We went back and rewatched yeah. the seasons to get caught up. Um, it's funny. Lasso has become... I may have shared this. Sorry. I don't care. It's our podcast. We'll talk about what we want. <laughs> um, Ted Lasso has supplanted The Office for me as the I'm um, sick watching oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. so when i don't feel well like if i have the flu or yeah. i had covid you know a few months back yeah i used to always watch the office if i was sick hmm. and now i it's become ted lasso because it's just like heart, physically heart i feel warming. awful uh -huh. and yeah. oh but mentally i mentally yeah. and emotionally this makes me feel good yeah um ozark was great i we loved we loved Ozark, but we, a funny tidbit, um, we cuss in my house a lot. What? Yeah, big cussers. Big cussers. Like the real ones or like the poo poos? Like, gosh darn it, girl. Oh, no. This that is, makes me mad as heck. Oh, no. This is a Richard Pryor special at my house. Uh, <laughs> this is Eddie Murphy raw on <laughs> meth. Um, we are cussers at my house. And we got, we hated Wendy. In the Ozarks, Jason. Uh, uh, she was she was the worst. She was to where I yeah. We would shout at every time she made a calculated political move that undermined Marty getting the family out of the cr cr crisis they were in. We would always just yell, "F and Wendy." Uh huh. And just, I mean, several Parts times. was the character, but it, also yeah. who they cast is like she did great. That you think was, so? I think so. Here's here's the thing. Oh. I don't like her by and large. I'm not a big fan. I don't fan like her, her buying small. Yeah. I don't like her selling large either. Um, wait, that's not bun. Oh, crap. I got that all wrong. Um, so, I, I'm not a big Laura Lenny fan. At all. But when you needed a cold, calculated, just, it's like, just for aggressive, me, grody this person. This is probably not fair. Like, Wendy and Laura Lenny are the same person. Mm -hmm. Like if I were to ever, if I were to ever meet Laura Lenny, I'd be like, "You're just a horrible My being. human being." Jack Black. And she's like, acted in his life. And then he <laughs> just plays Jack Black. <laughs> right. and he's very yeah. good at playing uh -huh. Jack Black. Although he plays pretty good, he does a good job in Jumanji. That's his best. I don't think you've ever seen it. Oh my gosh! So his role we've in talked, Jumanji you know, is actually pretty good. He, he, talk, play, he plays a pretty good uh, teenager girl. Yeah, we've talked about this before. <laughs> Kevin Hart, The Rock. Uh -huh. And Jack Black are the trifecta of suck for me. <laughs> I mean, the only thing that'd be better is Karen Gillian is really John Cena in the movie, and then I'm just like, wow, now I'm all the way out. <laughs> anyway, yeah, every single time, oh Wendy yeah, because was that's, undermining Marty. That we was the whole yelling yeah. At TV. And, and, and Marty was pretty. I mean, even Marty, it, he almost become he became. Oh, he's gross by the end too. Well, yeah, but he like. Entire situations, and he's like, "Well, let's, we'll wait, let's wait." Yeah. It's and I'm like, this guy. Yeah. You know, Mr. Calculated. No, uh, dude. Speaking of Mr. Calculated, the best character of the entire series was Jonah, the kid. Yeah. Who's uh -huh. like, "No, I know how to launder money. Oh, yeah. I'll go do it for other people." Then. Uh -huh. like, I don't have to be part of the family business. I, I got my way in. By the way, if you've never seen Ozark, uh, go back six minutes. Spoiler alert: We're going to talk about some, <laughs> some of the development character-wise with the show Ozark. Well, now That's I gotta a go, great pick. Now I gotta go back and watch the series. 
Yeah, we should. We should. We're still, um, after Halloween, we still kind of, we, we, we still let that horror genre trickle in until yeah. it's Christmas time. Yeah. yeah. We, uh, we stumbled onto a series called Mo, mm -hmm. uh, which is, it's only one season, so I'll, I'll warn you, like, you only got eight episodes, but it's, uh, Ted Lasso-esque, maybe. Okay. Maybe. It's about a Palestinian guy. Uh, who's living in America trying to get his citizenship with his family, with his mom and his, his brother. Um, M-O-E? Mo? No, M-O. M-O. On uh, Netflix. Oh, like Shofi Muhammad. Yep. Yes. yes. Um, Mo Salah. <laughs> yes. So it's it's worth checking out. Um, it's okay. We keep playing lots of footsies. Yeah, boots on today. We're doing a lot of thigh boots. rubbing. You've been wearing boots they're this not, whole time. They're boots. <gasps> He's wearing boot shoes. He's wearing boots. That, these are my favorite. These are my favorite shoes. They last forever. They're amazing. We're gonna have to talk about that. Yeah, well, you know. that looks like those look comfortable. They're crazy comfortable. Okay. Yes. Um, what size shoe do you wear? Uh, 13s. You want to trade right now? You Same. wear 13? You want sand them 12s? But I can. You can squeeze into these sandals. <laughs> <laughs> look, Jim, wearing sandals, <laughs> which is usually my go-to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Mo was in a flannel. Welcome and, to November. And then I mentioned a couple. Of my center moment a couple of episodes ago was the Naked Attraction series. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, I'm surprised. My wife, that's what she picks some nights. Hmm. It's and it's not a sexual thing at all. It's just so weird. It's, I was, it's very scientific and I mean it is what it is. But if you're offended by nudity, don't watch it because you'll it's lots of nudity. I, I have to I have to confess. <laughs> I was That's what this is for. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I was listening to that episode. Where you talked about naked attraction while I was in my office. Because I don't tend to listen to these on Sundays because weekend Ben has other things oh, to do. Oh, he's got more important things to do. But work week Ben's like, yeah, I can. He needs numbed out. I can finish so. a podcast while I'm staring at this Excel. And when you started talking about that, I closed my door because I just started laughing. And I'm not laughing at what you were saying. <laughs> I was laughing at the fact that there are people in your community that are like, Patrick watches nudity. Uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> I was like, well, oh boy, it's putting it all the way out there. I'm, I'm here for it. But I was, I was like, so that's not a thing. You'd be like, so what, man? Not right. a thing. I'd be like, no big deal. Who cares? Like, yeah. watch your porn. Enjoy. Do your well, thing. Wow. Yeah, cute. you're really putting it out but there. Like, all right. I don't care. Like, that's your business. Sure. Your business sure. is your business. Don't do it at my house. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just it was so funny because I was like I was so impressed that I was like he is not pandering to anybody yeah he's just being him <laughs> yeah he's well, talking about that he and his wife watch a nude reality show together it's weird and um, we don't not to say we wouldn't I just we don't because there's not a lot of there's not a lot of horror movies with uh, <laughs> nudity. With, well, there's no, there's, no, nudity. there's a lot of nudity. Oh, there's a lot of nudity, oh, oh, lot of nudity <laughs> in horror movies. Um, <laughs> I was like, no, that doesn't sound right. No, no, I've no, watched no. plenty and, of those movies. Yeah, no, it's it's boobs and blood and slashing. Yeah, and that's uh -huh. all it is. But yeah, it uh, it just made me laugh because I was like, <laughs> good on him, good. On, and, and that was the day I was like, holy crap, yeah. we have a podcast You're like, together. Patrick's so naive. That's cute. No, no, mm -hmm. it's. I just hope your kids don't listen, because I, I you know, know you know, one of them's gonna just sneak downstairs and be like, "Mom and Dad are watching porn." <laughs> well, anytime she hears that someone might be rustling around in the house and could show up anywhere, turn off, turn off, turn like, off. You gotta, you gotta turn that off. I'm like, one, I don't think they care, but two, yeah. like, we didn't grow up nearly as sheltered. Our kids did not grow up nearly as sheltered as as we did. We. We watched Naked and Afraid. Have you ever watched that mm -hmm. one? The survival show? We watched mm -hmm. that one during the pandemic with our kids, which is maybe a little inappropriate, but that was, like, we were big Survivor fans. Yeah, same. And we couldn't find same. Survivor that we could binge, but we could find Naked and Afraid seasons. Oh, wait. During COVID. Oh, this was during, do you still want to binge Survivor? No, I, I know where it is now. And we're, oh, okay. we're, Cammy and I are watching the new season. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so. Wait. Can we can we ask yeah. you about that? Um, I I can't stand Emily. So yeah, she's she's tough to be with. I I felt bad for the last the vote off last week. Um, I forget his name. You know, here's the thing. 
So, <laughs> but Jeff's gotten soft. Because Jeff used to be, if you don't want to be here, get off my show. Thank you. And you remember Colton. Yes. And Colton quit. Yeah. And then Colton quit again. Yeah. And when Colton quit the second time, Jeff was like, hey, uh, you're never coming back. Right. You're a disgrace yeah. to the game. Like, And he kind of gave him the business on the way out. So I got home. There were times where if somebody wanted out, he's like, do we even take a vote? Can yeah. we just get this yeah. person off Can the we, way? You don't want to be here? Let's just go. And, yeah. and like this time I kept waiting for Jeff to be like, so you, so hold on. Yeah. Like, right. That's Jeff's thing. Right. Yeah. So hold on. Right. And I kept waiting for him to be like, so you don't want to be here? Yeah. So let's get you off of here. Yeah. And he didn't do that. And I was like, Jeff's getting soft in his old age. He is still handsome as ever. But. <laughs> so I came home from work on Thursday. Uh, my wife was in a meeting. I had had a long day. Um, I had been in an all-day conference on Thursday. So I, I really just wanted to unplug. So I went up to the bedroom and watched Survivor from the night before. And. I came down, and she had come into the room and seen that I was watching Survivor and just kind of just did oh, okay. and and that's not it's not for her. I watched right. it. So I came down and she was like, "How is Survivor?" And I was like, "Well, they need a new casting director." And she's like, "What do you mean?" And I was like, two of the first four episodes, someone has quit. They've walked off." Yeah, like, one girl had a nicotine problem where she couldn't do without cigarettes. And then this other guy decided he couldn't live without his husband, and that's his actual survivor dream. And I was like, this is garbage. Yeah. It's terrible. Like, put together a good cast. Like, it's, it's become a uh, an amusement park. Yeah. I mean, it's like, okay, yeah, I came and visited. I'm good. I'm ready to go home. I am. And I know that it takes several seasons to go between. I am so ready for a competitive throwback. Well, and everybody You bring back everybody's former champions. Young. Yeah. I mean, everybody's a kid on this show, with yep. the exception of Bruce, and Bruce is a sympathy Well, thing. Bruce and the, the older and woman. And the, the, the woman, yes. Yeah. But still, I'm like, there's no... Welcome into Survivor Talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Style. I will say my final Survivor touch on this, and we can move on, because everybody who doesn't watch Survivor is now ostracized. Nah, get, um, get on board. So, and, and good segue, because get on board, my brother... Um, was texting me recently and I was watching Survivor and so we were talking about it and he said, oh, I haven't watched it for years and years. And I said, you know what? Start with season 41. I said, because season 41 and 42, the game completely changed. They, they reduced it from 39 to 26 days. They reduced the food. They reduced the supplies. They made it harder. The challenges were more intense. And I said, but it's also when the social dynamic of today's America and the conglomeration of gay, straight, lesbian, black, white, Jewish, like that all starts to come into play in the dynamic of the tribes. And I was like, so it's really cool because that's when Survivor took on the microcosm of like a mini America uh -huh. where people were being vocal about it. And I remember one where Jeff said, you know, hey, for 20 years, I've, or for 10, you know, 20, right. 20 years, I've yeah. been saying, come on in guys, but we're in a new era. And so like they have this open conversation about like, is that okay? And then one woman's like, as a queer woman, I'm okay with it. But then another guy's like, you know what? I'm not okay with it. Like, my partner's trans. Oh, I remember like, that. I remember that season. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And it was just really interesting that it... The yeah, because somebody, cause somebody got outed. And that was before. Right. Yeah, that was back in the late 30s episodes. Okay. Um, somebody gets outed for it. And it's out in the, yeah, it's at tribal council. Out of the closet. Yeah, and it's at like, tribal. Who, you, do you get to do that? Yeah, Zeke was yeah, that person here. Right. And Jeff, uh, Jeff Varner was the one mm -hmm. who, who drug yes. him out of the closet. Yeah, and look at you. It was uh, super fan guy. Super, <laughs> if there's a Jeopardy category <laughs> on Survivor. Uh, uh, and then they're 90 they're minute episodes, which is kind of. I like fun. that. Yeah. I like uh, that. And you then, mind if I drink more of your bourbon? No, you know, knock yourself out. Um, or drink yourself out with either way. Um, Dear Uber. And then um, The Amazing Race is right afterwards. And I've never watched I, that. I've watched, I've watched a couple of seasons. Okay. I'm not watching this current season. But I, I do, like, we have talked a couple of times of like, oh, we could, we, you and I should do The Amazing Race. Because I certainly couldn't do it with Cammie. Yeah. Um, that'd be good TV. Um, I bet we could boost our podcast ratings. Oh, if we went on a TV we show. We go from three to four listeners. What? <laughs> but at this point, if, we, if you and I were to do this, it would just kind of be like the, we'd be like the the killers in every horror movie. Not running and like just Like everybody would be running, you and I'd be like, well, let's get a beer. And, like, <laughs> 
So what? Where does it say we have to go? We'll what get do we there. have to do? Uh, we'll get there. You are you hungry? I can get. I go for something. I tell you what, man. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna grab six six more of these uh, sticky sandwiches. These sticky buns. You grab the rickshaw. I'll be on the minute. I'll pay. I'll see you in a few. It'd be a whole different trip. They'd be like. And we'd only last an episode or two. Oh, yeah. They'd be like, everyone's off to the races, and then there's these guys. <laughs> and Patrick found, <laughs> and Patrick found a, 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 a show to watch. <laughs> there's a, there's a whole camera crew would be sitting at the bar with us. We'd just yeah. be like, yeah, hey, hey, what's going on? <laughs> this is John. He works, uh, he works camera too. Carl works the boom mic. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I always, it's funny because I always thought if, because I love Survivor, I would never apply. At this point I I apply. I fill out the application at least three times, if not more. Really? And never send it in. Mm. And I was younger. Kimmy was always like, "You should be like." Mm. We were big diehard fans at the beginning, yeah. and she's like, "You would kill on Survivor." You would. I think you would win it. I don't know if I could now. Yeah, I don't think I could now either. Uh, um, I, I don't. I, my BSometer is. Uh, I'd just be like, okay, yeah, I'm tired of your like entitled, whiny, whatever, See, whatever. And that's the thing. I would be, I would be the villain uncle they all yeah. hate, where they'd be like, right. oh, he's telling us to work. Yeah, because we got to build a camp. Yeah, uh, yeah. Get out of the yeah. ocean. We can make it hard, or we can actually do. It's this. It's gonna rain tonight, and, and it's gonna, gonna take 15 minutes. minutes. Like, well, that's yeah. the other thing too. It's like this is not gonna take long. Let's just get a shelter built. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, we can sit there and complain, or we can just do this thing. Yeah. As a uh, I can't tell you the number of times that in real life, as an investigator, I've said to clients, this is not TV. I will not have this solved in 60 minutes. Yeah. Like, this might sure. take several weeks. I need you to understand. For real? There's not some magic database where I put in someone's face and all of their info comes up. This is actual investigative work. I feel like that's um, not true. No, nah, like, it's, guys, trust me. It's, it's... I feel like if you're good at your job, Columbo. Wow. Wow. That, uh, that cut deep. Do you have a do you have a do you have a contact that you put in that makes it look like a glass eye? I'm not gonna talk about that. I can't tell you that. That's like eight. That's uh, that's probably sorry. I probably offended the. I can't tell you. Columbo you fans out there. You can't. <laughs> do you go back and watch? Um, uh, do you go back and watch old? Uh, a lot of murder she wrote and stuff just to make sure you're you're on the right path. Of never. Lot of, how about Scooby Doo? You follow a lot of Scooby Doo. You'd be like, one hundred percent. Let me see. Yep. You're like. <clears throat> Let's see what's, uh, mm-hmm. what's going on here. Okay, Velma. All right. Yep. Let's see how. Mm-hmm. Exactly right. Yeah. No. No yeah. doubt about it. That's exactly. That's the way to succeed. Mm-hmm. If you're not watching Scooby Doo to help you be a better man. employee, <laughs> you're doing it wrong. Darn you kids! You're doing it wrong. I'd have got away with it too if it weren't for you, darn kids. I always thought if I went on Survivor, I would, because you know you you have those people who get voted off who have the great exit lines. <laughs> Um, you have a good catchphrase. You can have a good catchphrase. Oh, I did. I thought of one. What is it? I'd just be like, you don't have to. No, as soon as it? as soon as Jeff snuffs my it's torch, be the title of it. I would just Here be like, are you guys hiring? <laughs> <laughs> I would just look at him and be like, I don't want my Survivor dream to end. So can I just talk? Because the biggest thing. So here's the funny thing. When I watch Survivor, I watch the I watch everything but the politicking. So after the challenge. Before tribal council, you have this yeah. ten minutes of power. Yeah, you have this ten minutes of we're all scrambling to figure out who we're going to vote on. I never watched that, and like even when I've gone back and watched old seasons, I never watched the politicking part because it's only meant to fill time and misdirect you. And so, <gasps> but oh, I know, right? <sighs> but like, I, I love. Uh, oh gosh, who is the kid who had the Patrick Mahomes haircut? From I, I forget. He's from Vegas, but he's like when he got voted out, he's like. Y'all come by Vegas anytime, but not on Sundays. I go to church on Sundays. And I was like, that's great. That's a great exit line. So I think my exit line would just be like, yo, Jeff, are you guys hiring? Like, okay, where do I apply? I don't want to be on the show again. I just want to build the sets. I just want to hang out. And, oh, yeah. man, because I love the puzzles. When they did the behind-the-scenes stuff. Yeah. yeah. I, I love like, the They had those episodes where like, see what our production camp looks yes. like. And yes. What it takes to put together a and season of Survivor. I'm not a person who enjoys that kind of stuff, but holy crap. I, yeah. I, oh, right there. There's, there's a show title. I will survive. I will survive. <laughs> First I was afraid. I was petrified. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's it's become a cultural icon at mm-hmm. this point. We 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 entered into it during season uh, at the start of season two. Okay. Um, Cammy's sister had been like, "Are you watching this new show?" Yeah. She, she had watched season one. She's like, "You gotta watch it. You gotta watch it." 
And uh, we went, we went, I don't know where we would have found them back in 2000. And, that would have been 2000. 2000. I don't yeah. know where we would have found those episodes. Yeah. Um, I guess on the website. I guess back then they used to, the networks used to keep their past episodes oh, on the yeah. websites yeah. back then, now that I think about it. And so you could go back and watch it for free. Unbelievable. For wow. Free. Giving away money. Free. They're just giving it away. Um, and so we, we went back and caught a couple. And then when season two started, we are like, let's get into this. Yeah. And we, that was Colby and um, oh, yeah. Tina. Yep. Um, yep. That, was yeah, was that was a crazy one. That was a crazy one. Because you had the flood that happened with mm-hmm. the chef yep. at the end, and they lost all their rice, and yep. woo! Yeah, and then, yeah, and then you had Marquecas with Ra, uh, oh, yeah. Ra and oh, yeah. Africa. All of it. I mean, I, I could go back and watch Survivor again and be like, oh, yeah, I could go back mm-hmm. and relive those moments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They don't disappoint. Like, I know I told you that's that's what I did during COVID is I, uh-huh. I went back and watched every Survivor season. Did you really? I did. And um, so apparently I didn't tell you that. Hey, during COVID, I was told you told other Patrick that. I told I told Cammy that. And you told me that and I didn't listen. No, you're like, all good. I don't, I don't all care. Good. I don't know it, why you're telling me this. It was it I'm was not gonna funny follow though me. because we, my wife and I, stumbled on this um, great, great, great new series called uh, Special Ops Linus with Zoe Saldana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I have that. I have watched, that in my hopper because you mentioned it a couple of times to me. And we like, watched episode one. And I'm too cheap, so I only had the five dollar Paramount Plus subscription where I had to watch commercials. <laughs> Lioness was so good. I was after the first episode. It was annoying to have to watch commercials because uh-huh. we were so eager You're to see ready. what happened uh-huh. next that I laughed to my wife and said, "44 <laughs> seasons of Survivor with commercials. <laughs> with commercials. One episode of Lioness." Got me to upgrade to ten dollars a month, so I don't have to watch commercials. And now I'm just like, well, screw that. Let's go back and watch Survivor again. We uh, the time. we we don't watch Survivor, so we watch it on Wednesday nights, but we don't watch it until nine. Mm, mm-hmm. That way we can zip through the commercials mm-hmm. and then finish it almost about the same time as the yeah. regular show. Yeah. So there used to be a whole lot of nudity. They still put all the nudity on Survivor. The no, I think that's kind of died out. <laughs> yeah, I think that's I Jeff and Lorem with. Oreos and peanut butter. Yeah. And yeah. I think that was his own uh, satisfaction, well, too. Well, and then I think he got married. And yeah. He was, well, was probably life like, oh, changed. He's like, hey, yeah. how about you stop having 20-year-olds get naked for yeah. peanut yeah, butter and he, Oreos? His, uh, his wife is Zach Morris's first wife. Um, that actor. There you go. Yeah. That's your fun fact. Kelly, right? uh, Kelly Kapowski. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> no, no. Mark Paul Gosselin. I know, I know, yeah. I know, I know. His first wife is now Jeff Probst's wife. Uh-huh. So. Wow, we have talked about Survivor for a long time. We are going all the episodes. Uh, yeah, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm going to go back to some other, well, it started with your hypothetical, what do you go, What would you go back and watch? Yeah. Um, have you watched the Ken Burns documentaries? I have. Uh, yeah, I what, have. Which ones have you watched that you've enjoyed? Oh, man. The way you asked that, I was like, Ken Burns did a Survivor documentary? <laughs> I was like... Well, I missed that. Yeah, yeah. Like, so I was like, that one yet? I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer in no, broad no. terms. I, I was going back through like Hallmark, Hallmark TV, like yeah. things that's kind of like, no, this is the no, like Carol Burnett is sure. like pinnacle <laughs> comedy. What sure. are you laughing? At? Are you laughing? At? No, 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 I'm laughing because you're talking about going back through pinnacle TV and last night. <laughs> Before we start, so we went out to dinner, and before we start the movie, my wife's like, what is that? And I was like, I'm not watching Lawrence Welk. <laughs> she was like, oh, what? And I was like, I just, I don't know, something about that's so weird. Like, because it's, it's like sickly fascinating that I'm like, people literally sat at home on Saturday Watch night well, and I did, watched Lawrence Welk. I, I, I can mock you, but so, I did pull up Victor Borgia. Do you know Victor Borgia? God, I know that name. He, he is a Holocaust survivor. Okay. Um, but he is a amazing piano player, and he was okay. this, he was this comedic piano was his shtick. Okay. Go 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 do a YouTube dive on Victor Borge. B O R G G E. Okay. It's pretty entertaining. He's I mean, dude's got mad skills, mad huh. skills on the keyboards. Okay. Anyway, I, I mean, yes, I have watched like pinnacle stuff like yes. um, Carol Burnett, Seinfeld. Sure. Like those yeah. are like things that are like this was. 
these were mm -hmm. standouts in their genre. Iconic. Ken, Ken Burns yeah. is iconic documentar documentarian of right. American life, American history. Sure. Right? So yeah. I have, I have, I don't know if I've finished any of his series. But I've started like Vietnam and okay. I started like, and part of that's just because I'm like, Vietnam I find fascinating. We never got yeah. through it in high school, like oh, in the history okay. stuff. Like we always, like, oh, and Vietnam happened. And I'm like, <laughs> I think that's pretty significant. I think we should always talk about it. But yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think there's always, like, I don't know if I've ever finished a series, but I'm like, oh, that's something I, I should go back and, yeah. like, because they're so good. Um, he does a baseball one, he right? Does, he does. And and as a big baseball fan, I've watched his baseball series twice. And Wait, wait, um, is baseball different than big baseball? No. I, I'm I'm a fan of baseball. I'm a baseball fan? Yeah. Not big, you're not a fan of big baseball. No. <laughs> that's no. softball. <laughs> However, I did recently get programmed on one of my friend's phones as XL Ninja. That's a story for another day. Um, no, I, uh, I, I loved his baseball series because he did it fittingly in nine episodes. So one episode, <laughs> one episode. <laughs> Clever. And, Clever, that King Burns. The beginning is like kind of the run up to the invention of baseball and how baseball probably became involved and then it's just decade per decade. Is it not a and then, is it not a byproduct of cricket? It is. Okay. It is a byproduct of cricket. Um, and Abner Doubleday probably didn't invent it since he was at Abner war. Doubleday. Yeah, since he was at war when it allegedly got started. Um, but yeah, and then like the last episode is the seventies and on. But it's it's really cool to get like these backstories of the individual teams, clubs, struggles like player managers, gimmicks that people, like they one time brought in a midget because they were like, his strike zone's one foot by one foot. Little person. They can't, yeah, a little person. Yep, they, they, can't, uh, they can't pitch to him. So it's like, he's gonna walk every time. Right. But then it's like, but they can't run the bases. <laughs> so like, it's, this is futile. Yeah, like, got so, it. so it's just interesting, but then they do a good job of covering the Negro League and it getting integrated yep. into baseball. And um, yeah, it's just, oh man, it was so well done. And like the music and everything, and like even um, historians who aren't necessarily baseball historians, they're just historians, right. male and female alike, who go through talking about like their memories of what baseball meant to their father or their family. And like it was baseball was the staple of the house and it marked the time where they're like. There's so many people that don't like, like around here, like. Oh, tons of people. You're like, like, oh, I hate yeah. baseball. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I love baseball. Yeah. I love that it's not fast mm -hmm. like i'm okay i love that like i i enjoy a game i can mm -hmm. and i and like people are like oh you want to go to a game and i'm like yeah but I'm, I'm gonna go for the game mm -hmm. like we're sticking around to the end of the game whether mm -hmm. that's extra innings or whatever like I'm, right. i don't want to go right. for some of the innings yeah and they're like oh even if it's like oh you're that guy yeah right and i'm like here. no yeah i know i i enjoy the 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 beauty that is baseball yeah, I agree with that. And I, I've actually always said the one thing I love about baseball is kind of contrary to that. I don't go for the baseball. I love going... You love a wiener. I, I love a wiener. <laughs> and she laid at his feet. Um, I love... Go back and catch the last episode. Yeah, go back and catch the last episode for that one. I, um, I love baseball because you go to baseball with somebody you want to be with. And so, like you and I, could, you and I've been to a baseball. We've been to a I, it shows up on my I, my Alexa yeah. uh, show has pictures of whatever. Did we so, take pictures of that? Day? We did. Oh, we did. There's amazing. a picture that pops up every once in a while. I'm like, oh, oh that cool. was a nice trip. But like, you invite people to a baseball game that you intentionally want to spend time with. Yes. And so, for me, I've always been like, the greatest part of a baseball game is that you're sitting there, and you're having conversation with someone that you want to connect with. Yeah, you're right. But in Ugh. those lulls in conversation, oh look, there's a baseball game. Yeah, yeah I never so thought about that way. You're kind of always watching the game, but you're yeah. really investing in the person you're with. It doesn't, take, it doesn't take a lot of energy to watch a baseball game. It does not. It because does not. There's, it's great. you got yeah. plenty of whatever to be like, hey, what happened? Well, unless you're but, stupid, that, here's yeah, what happened. Yeah. Like, but, but it's funny because I have a buddy who has season tickets to the Colts. And every once in a while, he's like, you want to go to the Colts game? And I'm like, ah, really, really not. <laughs> like because I I don't want to spend my Sunday driving downtown sitting and like I but my thing is like hey 
And not really, but let's grab a beer Tuesday. Sure. Like, I want to hang out with you. Right. But I don't want to spend five hours of my Sunday doing this thing that I don't really enjoy anyways. And so, but like, if in even minor league, hey, you want to go to an Indians game? Oh, 100%. Let's yeah, go. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, hey, you want a road trip somewhere? Let's do it. Like, let's go. Um. Yeah, I would disagree. I would, I would do any, like, to see any profession kind of performing live... I, I, this this is something I realized about myself a couple years ago. I love anyone talking passionately about what they do, I, I, and I don't care if that's being a trash man. Yeah. Uh, and I had a good friend in Ohio who was, who yeah, was that, and he can passionately talk about being a trash yeah. man. And I'm like, really? And I'm like, that's a, that's just a whole other world. Like, please yeah. tell me about that. So it's always like when I have service men, like when I have to have the the HVAC serviced or whatever. Like, I always have a conversation with them, and it has to probably be pretty weird because I'm like, how long have you been doing this? Right, how long have you been right. with this company? Yeah. What do you like about them? What do you find <laughs> frustrating? Like, I, I always go through those questions I'm like, who the heck are you? They're like, am I on some like secret job interview, whatever? But I'm like, right. I, I just love hearing people that are passionate about what they're doing and why they love it and why they, you know, what why makes not? them get up in the morning yeah. and do it? And because it's, because it's different than what sure. I do, right? Sure. Um, yeah. And which was funny. Like, I had a conversation last week where somebody was like, how do you work? Like, and I was yeah, like. carefully. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, because you do this and you do that. And I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't, like, my, I exist uniquely. Yeah. And I get that. Like, I don't have a normal job like most people have a job. So, yeah. But I'm unique for what the skills and talents allow me to do, and I'm pretty good at it. So, sure. like, but it was just a weird, like, it was a really weird, like, it's somebody who I knew kind of, mm -hmm. but they wanted to know me a little better. And they're like, Can I ask you? They're like, How do you work? And I was like, <laughs> That's really an interesting way to ask that. Mm -hmm. But I like that. How do you work? How does your day get put together? <laughs> How do you get? Who pays you I'm for why? Confused. And why do they pay you for that? I'm confused. You seem by like all the most this. unproductive person <laughs> in the world, <laughs> but yet you seem to get things done. Yeah. I think you're doing it. I think <laughs> you seem to meet a lot of people, but <laughs> what do you do again? Uh huh. As my 16 year old says, Are you the social coordinator? You have a meet a lot of meetings and talk a lot. And I'm like, Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm gonna just put that on a business card. Oh, you know what? Speaking of that, um, I don't know if this is my center or saint moment today, but I I knew that we were gonna do we were gonna can some episodes today, and to work ahead because the holidays are coming up and we're trying to you know be a little proactive. We've, we've struggled to find a rhythm this fall. We have, we have, and um, you have struggled to find a rhythm this fall. I have. No, I. It's just me being so aggressive. I just help. wanted to attack you online. Wow. So I married here I took too. A, I took a change from cool. uh, attacking Cammy and wanted to come right after you. Cool. I'm just going to hope you enjoy <laughs> that. Beard, beard comb. All right. Well. I'm going to beard the microphone. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Can we mark these so I never have to use that one? <laughs> you don't know, like that? You don't want that to be uh, in your mouth? Uh, I do want that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and she laid at his feet. Oh, um no. I will say that I, um, this morning I intentionally didn't talk to anyone. <laughs> so much so that, like, You're saving all my interactions. I did. I was like, because you're, because it's funny, because you you're are exhausting. that person where you're like, you're no, so no, no, exhausting, no, 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 to your son's point, like, you talk a lot and you have a lot of meetings. So you're good at being on when you have to be on. And like my wife and I were talking and she's like, you're just, you're getting quieter. And I'm like, yeah, I was like, the older I get, the way more like that extrovert to introvert scales are tipping mm -hmm. in the introvert. And I was like, I'm really, I'm completely okay being alone. Like it's not a big deal. So I knew that we were going to talk a lot today. And I know that I have a buddy who wants to hang out later today, which is TBD. Yeah. Cause like, we'll see. But <laughs> I was, I got, this is, this is kudos to you. I wanted to invest in our time together today, so much so that I actually downloaded the Lowe's app while at Lowe's <laughs> so that I could type in what I needed and it could tell me where it was that so nice? that I didn't have to talk to another human. <laughs> To say, where does this have to go? Because I was so worried about the small talk. That, that's I was so worried about having to be like, hey, how's your day going? You, 
You like you like working here? Boy, you sure do know where the electrical tape is, don't you? Like and what Patrick heard was you are so exhausting to talk to that I need to make sure I had as much bandwidth as possible to offer you that because you're so needy. You don't know me at all. <laughs> you don't know me at all. Because what it really means is I'm invested in this. <laughs> I know it is. I know, know, but it's like, no, it's because I want to put good energy into this. And I don't want to give that energy to a Lowe's employee at 9 in the morning on a Sunday. Listen, Rob, I just need a T-joint. All I need to do is figure out where the screen that goes over my dryer vent lives. (laughs) Uh, I do appreciate it. I will use the Home Depot and Lowe's app to quickly. It's incredible. Because if you ask somebody there, I've had somebody take me. From one side to the next, and then couldn't find it, and then yeah. pulled up the app, and we're like, yeah. oh, we were right by it originally. And I was like, you Well, person. and millennials are dumb. This wasn't a millennial. Gen Z are dumb, and baby boomers are dumb. They're all, we're all, Gen X, Gen X, so, I figured it out, but that's about it. Ew, thank you. <laughs> May the rest rest in peace. <laughs> but yeah, it was like, I was, uh, I w- it was great to just like Google, what do I need? Or like t- type in, I, cause like I need propane tanks. Yeah. Great. And then I was like, oh wait, 26. That, well that can't be right. All the way down is only 18. And like, and then I turn around, I'm like, oh, 26 is like right there. And it felt good to use technology to help me dominate lows. Oh, I'm about to lose my center moment. I'm about to use a center moment on Amazon. Go. Because I were, it's all yours. I, well, it, I, it, we'll see how this unfolds, but I had ordered something and then took it back to Kohl's to return it because that's the new Oh, method. yeah, yeah. I love the UPS method. Yeah. Because I, well, Kohl's used to have it in the back of their store and they've now moved it to the front desk so that it's not as bad. Yeah. But still, I took something back. I had two things I ordered. I took them both back. She gave me one ticket. I'm like, don't I need two tickets? And she's like, nope, that'll cover both of them. Well, now I've got a message from Amazon that says, uh, we're charging you for this because you never returned it. Mm-hmm. And, of course, I threw the ticket away because I'm like, well, they they, they, said they, it was both. they offered me my refund. Like, my refund already came back. And now they're recharging me. And I'm like, mm, I'm about to lose my mind. Mm-hmm. I've been there. And, I, and I'm not going to get through anybody. I'm just going to get through bots. Yep. Mm-hmm. AI is the way. I do like ChatGP. I do all sorts. I do random stuff on ChatGP. I'm like, yeah, let's just see what it does if I say this. I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. It's. Have wow. you done much with it? No, not at all. It's we amazing. spend our free time in really different ways. It's a. Oh, that's how I spend my work time. It's not my free time. It's my paid time. Well, don't <laughs> tell the truth. It's church. how I work. It's <laughs> <laughs> um, how I work. Um. We're, we're, we're at time. We're 48. We're coming up in 48 minutes. So oh, yeah. geez. Uh, I offended little people. Um, I offended anybody who doesn't like Survivor. Um, I, I, Jeff, I offended... Pro- Jeff Probst, you're getting old and soft, man. Yeah. Come on, dude. Toughen up. Toughen up, buddy. Uh, I We offended anybody who doesn't like baseball. We offended Kelly Kapowski because she didn't know Zach. Man, so, so, <laughs> so many thoughts there. <laughs> Um, we offended very early on. We offended people who don't like fishing. Yeah. Or don't like hearing me talk about I, fishing. I should fish again. I should give it a shot again. That's right. You're a reformed fisher. We talked about yeah, that. Yeah, I never cared for it. Maybe I should try it again. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't. Do you like being alone? Um. Do you yeah. like silence? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> we'll see. Um. We learned all sorts of stuff. Our center and saint moments were caught up. You didn't hear those moments in the mess of the conversation that we just had. Yes, you, you did. did. You should or get some did therapy because we just you? laid it all out there. Or did you? We were being authentic. Or maybe you didn't. Authentically us. Yeah. Not the title of the episode, though. No. We're going with I Am the Survivor. <laughs> I think you said I Am a Survivor, I, but it, it sounded like it, it sounded like I, Ironwood Survivor. I, <laughs> no, I will survive. I will survive. That's At first, I was afraid. Yes. I was petrified. And uh, and uh, just a shout out to the Ironwood survivors for uh, for getting through that difficult time. I spent too many nights oh. wondering how you did me wrong, but I grew strong. Come on, I learned how to carry on, and now I'm back. Come out, face! I just walked in and found you there, and now that look on your face, I changed the lots, but I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> this has been a Sarah and Saint <laughs> podcast brought to you by Tide. <laughs> Keep by, it clean. By uh, by Dial Tide. So wash your mouth out, you dirty sons of guns. Uh, uh, I don't know how to lead us out of here. I'm going to send you out. I got you. Uh, I got you. I'll, oh, do, you got I'll, this? Do, I'll do this today. What? I'll step in. Episode 57, I'll what? step in. Yep. This is my saint moment. Woo! There will be moments in your life that are trying. There will be moments in your life that are hard. The only thing you have to do is try and survive. That's all it comes down to is can you survive in those moments, make good choices, be a good person, and get the crap out of here. <laughs> nice job. Well done. I didn't even sweat. Yeah. If you put me on the spot without knowing it, I would sweat. <laughs> you took that too. You're like, it's, give me the wheel. Yeah. I got it. I'm here to help. I'm landing the plane there, big I'm boy. Here to help, man. I'm I'm the co-host with the most of you. Uh, you rescued their big gravy. Big gravy says, uh, thank you. Mazel tov. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, hey, keep tuning in. Uh, we'll figure out the question and the, and the poll. I don't I don't know what it is now, but it's going to be something. Yeah, it's we'll probably going to be about a TV show that uh, you'd go back to and watch again. But That's uh, a great poll. Yeah, we'll get some. Because it was a great discussion. It was. A good, it like was. Um, but keep coming back. Keep uh, keep introducing a friend to this. Uh, if you want to be like, hey, you want to listen to two knuckleheads chuck along for 45 minutes? This is uh, This is it. So chuckle, chuckle, chuckle heads. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. See you.